Okay, so first of all, uh, welcome to uh, Sioux City. Have you been here at all in the past year? I have not been out this far west in the past year. I've been to Iowa a handful of times, but not to, not to Sioux City. And what, uh, what brought you here this time? The Chamber, chamber Dinner, a uh, big gathering of amazing Iowans. Uh, they've asked me to come talk to them about things that matter to families all across Iowa. So I'm, I'm looking forward to our conversation tonight. And is that what appealed to you in particular about uh, you know coming and doing yeah. this in the first place? Yeah, like this uh, feels like home. I'm from I'm from Wichita, Kansas, uh, just down the road, right drive through Omaha, and you're you're on to Wichita. This uh, when I flew in today looks like home. People I've met today, and it just feels very comfortable. And so a chance to talk to them, engage with them, will be um, energizing for me, and I hope inspiring for them as well. Okay. Um, so you're in Iowa. A couple days ago, you were in New Hampshire. Yeah. If memory serves me correctly. A few weeks ago, you were in South Carolina for an event as well. Did I yes, I was for my friend Congressman Duncan. Okay. Yes. Uh, obviously, you know those are also a couple of the states that are early in the uh, presidential primaries, and I could pull up dozens of articles at this point from <laughs> numerous websites talking about the possibility of you running in uh, 2024. So instead of asking that specifically, I was curious, what for you would the conditions need to be in the political landscape to say yes, I do want to jump in to the race in 2024? So it's really uh, not about the political landscape. Uh, it's about the conservative cause, right? The things that, and what I'll talk about then, it, this is a country worth fighting for. And I wanna be part of that. I wanna do my, be in my place. So I've spent the last 19 months out helping candidates. I was talking about, I'm gonna be back in October helping an Iowa candidate get across the finish line. Um, I'm headed all across the country in the next six weeks. So the decision about what I'll do next, the place I'll find myself, whether that's helping someone run for president or putting myself forward as a candidate, uh, will depend on my judgment about the most effective way to deliver what the American people deserve. Mm -hmm. so, it's, so it's not about the external political environment, it's really about what, where do I think that, that Susan and my wife Susan and me work and we have the most impact. Sure, it's all internal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you mentioned the possibility of, you know, maybe you just help someone mm -hmm. uh, running for president. Um, do you um, believe or do you think um, former President Trump should run again in 2024? Uh, I think that President Trump, former President Trump will get to make that decision. Mm -hmm. And then the voters all across America, uh, they'll, they'll get to decide if it is, if he is the right person for them to put forward. Uh, for me, I'll, by the way, I'll sort that out too. I'll decide whether I think it's, whether I think I'm the right person or whether he is. And, and um, I will, I promise you, um, I want to make sure that President Biden is a one-term president. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to ask about a couple of um, Iowa items that do have kind of larger ripples and are just Iowa specific, even though they're going on here right now. And so one of those was um, there's a push to codify an abortion ban mm -hmm. um, after six weeks. And so I was wondering, do you believe that um, that is appropriate? And if you don't think so, what do you think would be appropriate? As and is this in Iowa? Is this in Iowa? Yes. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I happen to think that every unborn child ought to be brought to life. Uh, I've watched the Democrat Party demand abortion all the way up to the moment of birth. That's deeply radical. That is, that even Europe doesn't permit that to happen. Even China is now trying to be better than that. But that is, that is deeply inconsistent with my understanding of America, my understanding of my faith, and the duty that we have to protect the unborn. And so I will, will sort through it for itself. Um, the state of Kansas will sort through it for itself. It will find the right place for those people. And I am convinced that the argument that we are making about these babies, about these children, we, we, sometimes in the political fight, we lose track of what it is this debate is about. This is about ensuring that we protect human life. Uh, and so I, I'm confident that as America works its way through in the post row world, uh, that there will be an increasing space and we will have more of these children brought into the world. And that will be a good and glorious thing, not only for those children, but for our culture as well. You mentioned Kansas. Um, what did you make of the uh, vote earlier this summer in Kansas as it relates to abortion? Yeah, it was very confusing. Uh, the candidates who are successful in the election in November will all be candidates that want to preserve the unborn and don't have a radical view of unrestricted abortion in the state of Kansas. Uh, I know that the left media, the mainstream media, pushed this narrative this summer. Oh my goodness, Kansas is now uh, pro-choice. Uh, that, that, that was not true, that is not true, and that will not be true. Mm -hmm. Um, another issue that's kind of been kicking around here for a little while now is um, there's a pair of proposals for a couple of different carbon capture uh, pipelines, and mm -hmm. it's been discussed the possibility of using eminent domain to make sure that those are built. And so I was sort of wondering, 
should the government use eminent domain for those kind of projects more broadly? And when is it appropriate, do you think, to use eminent domain? I can't answer that in the air. Every situation is unique and different. Eminent domain has been used to make sure that we can transport energy where we need to get it so people can have affordable energy. If the conclusion is that the state of Iowa or the local officials think that's the right way to go, but we should always be deeply skeptical when the government's coming to take your stuff. As someone who grew up in a world where government was too big and now lives in a world where government is even bigger and more powerful, the right direction is less government intervention, fewer uses of government power in this way. But I get it. There's times when in order for the state to achieve its objective, it has to do that. In that case, the Constitution talks about what needs to be done. You need to compensate the owner of that property fairly. I've noticed with this issue, not just here but in other states where it comes up, that it doesn't seem to be, even though pretty much everything is divided along political lines, it seems to be one of those few issues that there isn't as clean of a split. And I wonder what you kind of make about that, that people on both sides of the aisle have issues with eminent domain. America was founded on the notion that private property matters. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are deeply wrapped up in this idea of private property. And our biggest foe, the Chinese Communist Party, doesn't understand. One of the central differences between us is they don't value human life and there's no such thing as private property. We've got to make sure we never get to a place like that. In March... And the last point, too, really to answer your question, I don't think that's a Republican idea. I don't think that's a Democrat. I think that's an American idea. And in March, Governor Reynolds signed a bill that would prohibit transgender girls and women from participating in female sports at a number of different levels. And there have been similar bills in other states that have gone through and been codified. Although it seems, based on reporting, and reporters aren't perfect, so they might have missed some cases, that there aren't necessarily a lot of cases of that happening, of transgender girls and women participating in female sports. So I'm wondering, is this at all a solution that's maybe in search of a problem, or would you disagree with that? If you have a young daughter who is just trying to compete, the fact that men may choose to enter that competition is deeply unfair to them. And women for a long time fought for Title IX to protect these women's right to go compete and to have enough resources and money in our colleges and our high schools to not throw that away so that we can let men decide they want to go participate in that is a radical idea and one that we should oppose every step along the way. And then last question for you. You know, after folks have left the night, after all the food's kind of been scraped away from plates and people are driving home, what is the main thing that you hope people take away from what you have to say? America doesn't have to head down the path towards decline, towards teaching our kids garbage in schools, towards more crime, towards a crazy set of policies that make life unaffordable for Americans. We can do better than that, and it's worth fighting for. Don't give up. This nation, our history is important. We are exceptional. This is a unique country, and this fight is worthy, and I pray that they will all go stay in it. Okay. Those are all the questions that I had for you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.